This is News 4 In-Depth. And thanks for joining us tonight for our News 4 In-Depth special. I'm Jonathan Martinez. Tonight we are taking a closer look at the population boom of San Antonio, Austin, and of course all the cities in between. Also what the growth of this inevitable mega metro means for our economy, transportation, construction, even our water supply. Here's a look at the area that we are talking about. It starts with Travis County, goes south, to Hayes County, Comal, and into Bear County. Essentially, it's the I-35 corridor between Austin and San Antonio. While the growth spurt reaches far beyond what you see right there, up and down I-35, these four counties make up one of the fastest growing areas in the entire country. Now, not only are San Antonio and Austin two of the top 10 largest cities in the U.S., Hayes and Comal are two of the nation's fastest growing counties. This is where San Antonio's Matt Roy is crunching all the numbers for us. Well, Jonathan, according to the Texas Demographic Center, about 3.9 million people live in the prime corridor counties. The latest trend shows that that number only going to continue to grow. Now, taking a look at the population changes of the last three years, the numbers, they're pretty compelling. Travis grew about 3%, Hayes about 10%, Comal a little over 13% and seeing the biggest jump. And then Bear County's population up just about 2% with over 41,000 more people moving here in the last three years. Now, pretty staggering numbers. And as Jonathan's going to explain to you right now, the majority of people who are moving here to San Antonio actually coming from Austin. Jonathan? Yeah, in fact, new data from John Burns Research and Consulting found Austin is San Antonio's largest migration of people since 2020, and the numbers grow each and every year. From August 2022 to 23, 20% of people moving to San Antonio, well, they came from Austin. That's up from 17% in 2022, 11% in 2021, and 7% in 2020. As for the reason, well, San Antonio is more affordable and the abundance of employment opportunities are attracting people from Austin. Now, all of this growth along the corridor is happening for both residents and businesses. That was a big talking point at the annual Austin San Antonio Growth Summit this week in San Marcos. Census officials say between six and seven million people will move into the areas along the I-35 corridor over the next 20 years. Economic leaders from the area tackled what that growth means for our region. This will be one of the fastest growing mega regions in America over the next 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, and so we need to get it right. It's a diversity that gives us a real international uh, menu to choose from of, of people that can come here, invest, and help create better lives for all of us here in Central Texas. Now, another key talking point, a reliable public mass transportation link between San Antonio and Austin. As Hayes County continues to grow, so does the demand on its airport. The San Marcos Regional Airport services everything except scheduled commercial aircrafts. Local officials say it acts as a designated reliever airport for both Austin and San Antonio when air traffic becomes too congested. It's also a place for cargo planes from Amazon to land and distribute its packages right here in our region. You know, San Antonio and Austin are joining forces to attract businesses in the heart of where all the growth is happening. Greater SATX and Opportunity Austin have started co-marketing and data sharing projects. Together, they actually visit the state capitol to advocate with shared priorities and goals for the corridor. They're focusing on Comal and Hayes counties. First and foremost, we've got to tell the story. Right, we have got to effectively market not just San Antonio, but the broader mega region for these opportunities. And and quite frankly, that's where we have fallen short and we've fallen behind historically. We haven't necessarily had the funding or manpower to do that. We now do. Now, leaders say the Comal Hayes area provides great opportunities in advanced manufacturing, bioscience, and cybersecurity companies as well. As the merging of San Antonio and Austin becomes a reality, we wanted to know what should this mega metroplex be called? And we do want to hear your ideas tonight. You can chime in right now on our News 4 Facebook page. You can find that post right there on the top of the page and weigh in. Now, one way to avoid the I-35 traffic between San Antonio and Austin is by taking State Highway 130. It starts near Seguin and takes you north to the east side of Austin. Officials with State Highway 130 Concession Company, which oversees the southern section of the highway, tells us traffic has actually increased on the road 17 percent in just the last year. at averages to more than 20,000 cars every day. There is talk among economic partners in San Antonio, New Braunfels, San Marcos, and even Austin to eventually develop a new connector from I-35 around New Braunfels going east 
130. Now the growth isn't just along I-35. Communities along 281 just north of San Antonio also seen a major population boom there as well. TxDOT plans to widen 281 from Bloorville Road and Bolverde up to Highway 46. The project is still in the preliminary planning stages. 281 from Highway 46 to Guadalupe River is expected to be resurfaced within the next four years. And north of that, a project that starts at the Bear Comal County line and extends into Blanco County. It's also expected to start within the next four years. Now, all of these projects will be funded by the Category 4 Statewide Connectivity Corridor Project. Now, another idea to alleviate traffic along the 35 corridor, a potential train that runs from San Antonio over to Austin. People who may not ever use public transportation in their everyday lives would consider using this train just because the commute between the two cities is so terrible. Now that's the founder of Restart Lone Star Rail District, a grassroots coalition pushing to create a regional rail system. The group says it would include several stops across San Antonio and more in New Braunfels and San Marcos. We're trying to provide access to this rail service to a wide variety um, of residents in San Antonio, not just people who live near downtown. A Union Pacific, the freight rail operator that actually owns the track, says they haven't received a request for this passenger rail service, at least not yet. From riding the rails to walking the trails, the Great Springs Project, a 100-plus mile nature path, it's also in the works, that would stretch from the Alamo City to the state capitol. The project CEO says the trail system will link the San Antonio Springs, Comal Springs, San Marcos Springs, and Barton Springs in Austin, creating a natural path between the two cities while conserving water and land. Now, one third of the trail is already on the ground. Another third consists of carving out paths in cities along the way. This trail is to connect all of the people and communities along the way, the Selmas and the Shirtses and the Kyles and the Butas. This is a trail for everyone to use, whether you're a hiker or a biker or a stroller, whatever it is that you happen to be, because it's going to connect all of this region. Sounds good. The CEO says they are actively talking to landowners to purchase a right of way for the final third leg of the trail. The group expects to have the entire project complete by 2036. As the population grows, so do concerns about the abundance of water. We're working for you right now to find out what's being done to make sure there will be enough water for everyone. Representatives with SAWS says they are confident in a plan that they are putting forward along with regional and state leaders to ensure we have enough water for years ahead. Water utilities across our region have a shared agreement about how the aquifer is used. They believe it's a model across the country on planning for the future. Those types of partnerships, cooperation, collaboration, that's what's going to get us through uh, the next 50 years. So what we are doing is absolutely working. So as also says every community up and down the corridor plays a key role in water management. And welcome back to News 4 In-Depth. Tonight we are taking a deep dive into the growth between Austin and San Antonio. And so far we've shared numbers on the population boom along with the impact on construction, transportation, even our water supply. And next up we are joined by Dr. Lloyd Potter. He's a Texas State demographer, even a UTSA professor, and he's here to talk data and discuss the impact of growth on all of us. Dr. Potter, thanks so much for joining us. Well, it's good to be with you. All right, for folks who have no idea what a demographer does, talk to us about what your job entails if they don't know. Well, demographers study population, so so our my my job is to study the population in Texas and then to communicate what's happening demographically in the state, and then to work with policymakers, with state agencies, with legislators, with cities and counties and so on to make sure they have the information they need to make sound policy decisions that ensure that our quality of life in Texas stays as good as it has been. That's pretty important. So today we're talking about specifically the San Antonio-Austin corridor. You've been studying it for years. What can you tell us about this growth? Well, if you if you look at Texas, of course, Texas is growing more than any other state. Uh, we're, we're, we've added more population than any other state over the last decade and continue to do that. We're growing faster than most states. There are a couple states that are small that are growing faster, but we're certainly growing very fast. And I think one of the things about that is that a big part of our state is losing population at the same time um, we're the most significant growing state in the country. And so the, a lot of that growth is happening in what we refer to as the population triangle, which is Dallas, Fort Worth, San Antonio, Austin, and Houston. But the San Antonio, Austin corridor is a really significant and rapidly growing area. 
um, when you kind of look along the I-35 corridor between San Antonio all the way up, actually beyond Austin into Williamson County, um, even going up into Waco, just very rapid population growth, um, very uh, quick and significant population growth. Sure, and it's like the best kept secret here in San Antonio, but all of a sudden we got a lot of people moving in. To that effect, let's talk about the, the idea of housing. I understand you've got uh, housing data as well that's pretty important, no less. Right, we do monitor housing. That's a big element of studying population. Uh, if you have people, they need a place to live. Uh, without question, there are increasing demands on housing uh, that then creates a situation where the prices of housing go up um, and there's less available housing. So it also, in, in many ways, uh, creates a lot of pressure on our homelessness situation as well. Or people that are just living right at the edge where they can barely afford to pay their rent or to pay their mortgage and then to take care of their other expenses. So, so that's, I think, one of our biggest challenges in San Antonio, but again, if you go all the way up the I-35 corridor into Austin, I mean, Austin certainly has a very significant homeless uh, problem mm -hmm. as well, and housing in, in Austin is more expensive, much more expensive than it is in San Antonio. But, but again, if you look at uh, San Marcos and New Brunfels, kind of the whole corridor in between, it's just filling in very, very significantly. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us oftentimes make that drive in between here and Austin and with more people comes a whole lot more traffic. Uh, what do you think is the idea when it comes to relief? How can we get more relief from traffic congestion? Uh, well, I suppose we could stop growing as fast as we <laughs> have been. That. Uh -huh. that would <laughs> slow things down a little bit. But I don't see that happening. Again, our projection suggests continued growth the way that we have experienced it. Uh, if you look at um, the I-35 corridor and the work that TxDOT is doing, I mean, they, they certainly are strategizing and building projects to try to reduce um, congestion. That, you know, that's been a very significant uh, effort on the part of TxDOT is to try to identify congestion points and, and address those. We're certainly experiencing that in San Antonio right now with mm -hmm. a lot of the construction projects. But, but I, I think ultimately we're seeing increased density of population, housing, um, uh, commercial uh, properties, and essentially that makes it more difficult, even if you're expanding roadways, uh, to kind of move people and freight efficiently. And so increasingly, I think there's probably some recognition that we may need to really begin to explore um, you know, other, other modes of transportation, such as um, trains or, you mm -hmm. know, uh, but, you know dedicated bus lines, things like that, other kinds of um, transportation strategies beyond just surface car and truck transportation. Sure. And I guess lastly, uh, one of the big questions a lot of people may be wondering, is Austin, San Antonio, the next Dallas, Fort Worth Metroplex? Um, yeah, I think you could maybe even say it is now in some ways. I mean, if you look, uh, you know, the pop combined population of the metropolitan areas of San Antonio and Austin, um, New Brunfels, and it's a, a little less than five million. If you look at uh, combined, so if you kind of look at the counties mm -hmm. that kind of make up those metro areas, and then if you look at Houston, the Houston Metro Woodlands area, mm -hmm. that's about seven million. So, you know, we're a little, you know, two million below where Houston is as kind of a metro area. Sure. Uh, Dallas Fort Worth is a little bit above Houston in, in terms of that. So, so we have the population that essentially you could kind of say that we are that, but but you need to start looking then at kind of economic integration and commuting patterns and things like that before you really begin to kind of say that, oh, we are like si very similar or the same sure. to as Dallas-Fort Worth. And how to make it all work. All right, Dr. Potter, thank you so much for coming okay, in and taking the time My pleasure to be with us. you. Okay. All right. Hey, we're getting some pretty interesting ideas from you on our Facebook page of what the Austin San Antonio Metroplex should be called. Over a thousand comments in just a couple of hours. Some suggestions, San Antonio, uh, San Austin Metro, the Southplex as well. Others poking a bit of fun, including the Finish the High 35 Plex, Lifetime Construction, and Good Taco, Bad Taco. You can join the conversation right now as well on our News 4 Facebook page. Certainly appreciate you joining us for our in-depth newscast and special on the San Antonio-Austin Corridor.